have you recently retired or considering retiring? But just not sure what you're going to do once you retire. Is there more to life after work? Our next speaker has a lot of great tips on what to do when you retire. Let's go. Building spirituality, family, health, and business. This is The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant. Hey, Giant Builders, welcome. I am so glad that you're here. And I wanted to let you know that I am going to go check all my social medias and make sure you are following us. So if you have not followed us yet, go on there. I have all the links below. So click on there and follow us. So today's guest is Jackie Doucette. Hey, Jackie, how are you? Hi, Lois. I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I am doing great. The sun is shining and God has just filled the air with just love and beauty. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about you and what you do? Um, sure. Well, um, I'll step back a little bit. I, I uh, spent uh, 40 years doing a career with the military in Canada, um, 20 years in, in uniform and then 20 years out of uniform in, in normal clothes, not just naked. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> I was, I was a pharmacist and I, I worked, uh, with the, uh, the health services with the military across the country. But, um, now what I do is I help people sort out what they want to do with the rest of their life because when I was getting ready to retire a few years ago I started looking online for retirement planning and all that was out there was financial information and I didn't want that I mean it, it's important for sure but at that point if you when you're ready to retire if you haven't got the finances in order it's kind of late to start but I was looking for all the other stuff and and five or six years ago there was nothing online about the you know, the, the mental preparation, the physical preparation, the emotional preparation for retirement. So I figured, well, that's, you know, that's a good place for, for me to jump in because I'm looking for that. So other people probably are too. Oh, that is so true. I think that's why I think that I'll work forever because I just don't know what retirement looks like. And that's what so many people said when I said I was getting ready to retire. It's like, oh, I'm never going to retire. My, you know, my job's my life. What would I do? And that's sad, in, in my opinion, that, that's sad. There, there's so much more and you've got so many years ahead of you. Oh, that's true. So give us give us some tips. I mean, okay, so how do I <laughs> mentally prepare to say I'm going to retire? Well, there's a lot of things that, that go into that. The first thing you have to think about is you're going to get up in the morning and you're not going to have that job to go to. So what are you going to do? And most people go, well, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to figure it out when it comes. And that's okay for the first little while. You've got to give yourself a chance to relax and kind of regroup. But you've got to think about, you know, when you were 10 years old and you went outside in the morning, there were a million things to do. Your your day was unfolding in front of you. And, and it's like that again. You've got to go back and remember what you were interested in and think about the things that you put aside for your career because, you know, I have to get up and go to work. So I can't go do, you know, whatever it is that's exciting. Now's your chance to go back and do that. So take some time, make a list of the things that interest you. And if you can't think of something that interests you, then that's where the, you know, that's where I come in. That's where the, the extra work is involved because there's got to be something that interests you. You're, you're, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old. There's got to have been something in your life that, that struck a chord at some point and you've just forgotten what it is. That's true. And there's so many things available now that weren't available to like when my parents, you know, okay. Like, um, pickleball, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, you know, I think there's multiple things available. I think the hard thing to me would be just mentally deciding what I was going to do the next day. I think the creating of the schedule might be difficult for me. It could be. And, and it depends on the kind of person you are, whether you need a schedule, you know, that, that dictates I'm going to do this at 10 o'clock and Oh, Oh, it's, 
it's 1045 now, I have to go do something else. It, it doesn't work that way necessarily. I mean, maybe you're you're that rigid. I know, you know it took me a while to relax a little bit. Um, I used to go on vacation and and things would be scheduled in the resort. And I'm I'm standing there at the, you know, at the deadline time going, well, where is everybody? <laughs> and, you know, they show up 15, 20 minutes later. But it's important to know what kind of things you can do, but maybe not schedule it so tightly that you don't have downtime. I, as I, I used to tell my kids, it's okay to be bored sometimes. It gives you time to reflect and time to figure out who you really are. Well, that's good. All right. So direct me with um, how do I find some of these things? I mean, there, like I said, there are more things available, but where do I, where do I look for something? Um, again, I guess it depends what, what you're looking for, but you can Google retirement activities. That's it. It's big now. So that, you know, that's the uh, one way to find things you can, um, you, you can book a, a, a conversation with me and I can, you know, run through all the different things that, you know, that are available and where to find them. Mostly it's, you know, you get out in your, in your neighborhood, go out in your community and, and see what people are doing, figure out, you know, get in touch with local people, find out what they're doing with their lives because everybody's not sitting in their, in their living room. I hope just, you know, waiting, waiting to die. It's like <laughs> they're out doing stuff. So, you know, other people know what to do. Like you mentioned pickleball, there's every community has activities going on. Um, you could go to your, your library. There's going to be a list of activities that are, you know, that are going on there. Open up a newspaper if you still get one or go online if you subscribe that way and, and look at you know what's happening this week. There's so many ways to find things. Oh, well, that's a good point. That's a good point. Is there a way to decide, OK, yeah, I'm ready to retire? Is there something that's inside of us that says enough's enough? I'm tired of working. I think that's the voice that, that says that. I, at least it worked that way for me. And I know for a number of people that I've talked to. You get up every day and you go to work and, and you just do it because that's you know the way life is. But there comes a time when you wake up in the morning and you go, why am I going to work today? You know, it's like I don't enjoy this anymore. I'd rather be doing whatever. And that's when you've got to start thinking, you know, maybe there's more. Maybe maybe there's something else because I think you should be enjoying what you're doing. And to me, that's that's what retirement is. It's doing the things that you want to do when you want to do them. And if your job isn't one of those things you want to do anymore, then it's time to find something else. No, well, that's good. I think that my family will probably not be happy when I retire because everybody's going to get crocheted blankets or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that could be, but there's places for those too. There's, there's lots of places you can donate all those crocheted blankets. Yeah. They can go to, you know, other countries where people need blankets. They can, you know, they can go in a, in a gift, box that's being sent to some you know some soldier someplace who needs another blanket you know there's all sorts of places that you can donate your things see there again that's where my mind was blocked you know it's like i didn't even think about the fact that we're we're so global anymore yeah. that whatever talents we have or whatever skills we can make something or do something it's not just limited to my own backyard my own box my own backyard yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, that was there, really great. There are always organizations looking for donations of you know, clothing. If you if you make clothes, knitting, all that kind of stuff, there's always people looking. I imagine, too, there's a lot of organizations now looking for volunteers that. Yep. Yeah, I and think that's probably, a wonderful way. Yeah, I think I remember seeing um, something about. Uh, retired people reading to kids or even just volunteering at pet shelters um yep. just kind of a win-win situation yep you can you know maybe look into your local uh, public school elementary school because the uh, the teachers often need help with the younger kids when they're learning to read you can just sit down and and go over the alphabet you know with two or three child a child's two or three children in the day and you know help them learn to read it's you know I used to do that you know not not as a retired person I used to do that when my when my children were young he'd go in and sit there in the classroom and you know read with the kids oh that is so good and I, you know I think I what I like about that is that you, 
you have such a usefulness because you're impacting somebody else's life. Yeah. And that's something that that's something that that's really important when you retire is the idea that y- your value is gone because you're not contributing to your job anymore. People identify so closely with what they've done all their life. It's, oh, well, you know, even me, when you said, you know, what do you do? I started off with, well, this is what I used to do. But it's it's so important to remember that you're still valuable. You've still got lots to give and, and you aren't whatever your job is. Oh, that's cool. Now you imagine that there's like a lot of different class type things. Like I think my husband was looking up how to do pottery classes and there's just so many other things to, I mean, just because you're retired doesn't mean you're going to stop learning. Exactly. And that's something that's one of the, um, a little book that I wrote, it's called the lifelong learner. It's, it's so important to keep learning all of your life. It keeps your brain active. It keeps, you know, it keeps you involved in what's going on. And that's, that's a key point to your physical, mental, emotional well-being as you get older is to, you know, keep doing things, keep learning and, you know, don't be scared because you don't know how to do something. There's a YouTube video for it, for sure. <laughs> well, that's, I'm sure there is, <laughs> whatever you're looking at. <laughs> yep. Um, is there any question, oh, is there any question that I should ask? Um. I don't know. I you're doing. I think you're doing well. There's. Okay. A, um, I just don't want to miss any major point that you would want to bring out. Okay. I no, mean, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. So going back in. Well, tell me a little bit more about your book. Is it available to the public? Yep, it's on Amazon. I've got two or three of them actually, and they're really, really quick little. You know, maybe even ten minute reads. They're they're very easy to go through. Um, and they're just sort of not not even a, as deep as self-help. I've got one that's finding your why. So a lot of people don't know what they're doing with their life, what their what their you know point is. And it's not finding some deep mission in life. It's just realizing what it is that you know you might be good at. And the lifelong learner is just pointing out the different ways that you can stay involved and and keep learning something new and and how important it is to keep learning something new well great i'll tell you what we're going to give one of your books away so yeah so giant builders leave a comment below the youtube video and that will be linked in the podcast um, section too so leave a link or leave a comment below on let's see what should we ask um what would be your favorite thing to do once you retire or if you're retired and we'll have a drawing and we'll give away one of the books. Awesome. So, all right. Any other tips for those who are, so is there a difference between like those who are thinking about retiring and those who are retired? Are there different tips in those sections? Um, well, only, only in so much as when you get doing it, uh, you know, it's the idea is that when, if you're just getting ready to retire, you've got time to think about it and and prepare yourself. Whereas if you're already retired, you might be floundering a little bit and you know wondering what to do and saying you know why didn't I do that? The you know the idea being the same as the the uh, when's the best time to uh, plant a tree? It's like twenty years ago, <laughs> but the second best time is now. So all of the tips, all of the ideas are actionable and you know important for right now it doesn't matter what point of retirement you're at okay any closing tips um don't be scared of it i a lot of people say they're they're afraid of retirement because they don't know what they're going to do or because um their job is their life and and they don't know who they are without it you'll definitely figure it out and it, it's okay not to know it's okay not to have a purpose going forward but if you feel like you're ready for a new step, a new stage in life, then, you know, seriously consider it. Don't, don't shy away from it. Oh, great. All right. So well, a new question here. Um, what would a first meeting look like with you? Um, 
it depends on which you know, I've got a few different links, so different types of meeting, but the first meeting would just be um, getting to know you and for you to get a feel for what kind of things that I talk about and what I do. So I, you know, I ask you what stage you're at, whether you're preparing for retirement or, you know, just kind of thinking about it or whether you've been in there for 10 years and, you know, now you've run out of things to do. Um, we discuss your hobbies, your activities, what you like to do, you know, what your goals were when you were young, when you were starting out, that sort of thing. I just, just a, you know, meet and greet. Okay, great. All right. Well, I'm going to have all your contact information below. So Giant Builders, awesome. if you're thinking about it's time or should I, or what will I do when I retire? I recommend have a chat with Jackie because I think you will get a better direction on your second check, second chance at life. How's that? <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate all your information. And I, like I said, I'll have the links below. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Lois. You're welcome. Giant Builders, we'll see you next time. How'd you feel? Oops. I stopped my video instead of the recording. That was silly. <laughs> Thank you for listening. This has been The Giant Builders with Lois Wyant.